Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Sorry we're about 10 minutes late, but it is March 5th, Friday. It's time for another live stream. Woohoo! Today we're going to be drawing and painting a panda bear. A panda. Why you say? Because I feel like it. So there you go. I hope you guys have had a great week since last week. We've had a good one, nice and busy. Dustin and I have been feverishly working on the new course on drawing a clear expressions. And uh, matter of fact, I've got a, uh, if you go to the desktop, Dustin, this is one we just finished up where I'm talking about some miscellaneous expressions. We had some fun. We have the, the little neutral character up in the upper left. And then there he is trying to make a flirty face. And then there's a face where he's in pain. These are all expressions that aren't necessarily tied to an emotion because there's basic emotions that we go through uh, during the course as well. But these are certain ones that are just kind of on their own, like sick or confused over in the upper right, or just straining like you're picking up a heavy weight down on the lower left, nervous, and then there's tired, drunk, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, you, and you could come up with a hundred more of these types of uh, adjectives. Uh, and this is, this is all stuff we're covering in that course. So uh, it's still in pre-order right now too. So if you go over to creatureartteacher.com, you can get that course. And uh, Dustin has a slide for it right there. Yeah. So um, it's still in pre-order. It's going to be probably about eight to ten hours. It's not a huge course, but it's nice and really specific. I've actually had a really great time um, recording this and doing it. Um, uh, you know, doing different facial expressions. It was something I struggled with when I was in college, and it wasn't until I got to Disney and started working as an animator and working with some of the more established animators that kind of imparted their wisdom and helped me out with my uh, uh, expressions, you know, drawing expressions. And so this, a lot of this is all stuff that I've learned over the last 33 years that I've been animating. Yes, 33 years. That's how long it's been um, that I've been animating. And um, so, uh, and I'm trying to stuff it all into this little eight to 10 hour course. So it's going to be pretty, pretty dense. It's pretty fun. Um, but anyway, there's that. And uh, uh, also, I want to remind you that today is our last day. We decided to extend our sale. Our seven-year seven, seven year anniversary came up that we've been in business. And so Nick and I decided let's do a uh, let's do a seven-year, seven-day, seven-dollar sale. So today's the last day for that. And uh, go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and you'll find that everything's been reduced down to seven bucks and, and less in, in some places. So uh, check it out, man. It's pretty cool. What am I missing? The book. The book. We got a book in pre-order. You can order my first uh, ever art of book, The Art of Aaron Blaze. That's me. Um, and we are trying to get it out by June of this year. Nick and I, uh, that's another project that we are feverishly working on. We've got a lot of irons in the fire over here at Creature Art Teacher. And uh, so we're trying to get that done. Um, but in the meantime, you can pre-order it for quite a bit of savings uh, at 45 bucks. And uh, if you go over to creatureartteacher.com slash books, you can get it there. And there's two books, actually. There's one on 100 drawings, uh, which will be a soft cover. And it's literally what the title is. It's 100 of my drawings. And then the, the, the big coffee table um, hardcover book is uh, The Art of Aaron Blaze. And that's going to be much more uh, rounded out. We've already picked about 250 pieces of art for that. Really excited about it. And uh, we're in the stages of laying it out right now. So going over to creatureartteacher.com slash uh, books. And then one last thing. I got one more iron in the fire. And that is my, um, my uh, March 20th live web event. I'm going to be doing a course live all day on painting animal portraits in watercolor. So I'm going to be doing two portraits. Um, the one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And uh, uh, it's going to be great. So go on over to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you'll get more information over there. Um, like I said, it, um, it's going to be me painting um, animal portraits in watercolor. Uh, there's a There should be a list posted of the supplies needed. You don't need necessarily everything there, but if you want to paint along with me, you should have some watercolors. Uh, one question we get a lot of is, hey, is it okay if I follow along with digital watercolors? Hey, if that's what you want to do, that's great. I'm not teaching digital. I'm teaching traditional. 
So um, they don't quite relate, but if you want to follow along digitally, you're welcome to do that. Just don't ask me questions about digital <laughs> while I'm painting traditional because they just don't, they don't overlap. But if you want to paint traditional, ask away. So we're going to be doing that on March 20th coming up. It's just a couple weeks away. And, uh, and there you go. I think we covered it all, right, Dustin? I think so. Yeah, you think so? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So <laughs> let's move on to, let me get, whoops. There we go. Let's move on to pandas. We, oh, by the way, we got Dustin on the other side of the camera over here. There he is. Hi. Yeah, there's Dustin. We got Nick Nick in, uh, in uh, Sarasota. Nick, 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 Birch, Birch. All right, so, you know, the other day I did a, uh, I did a Lion King, anthropomorphic Lion King. Well, I, I just did it as a different take on the Lion King. I'll pull it up real quick. Uh, let's see, open, here we go. And there he is, Lion King concept. Whoops, Lion King concept, this guy. Pull it up, pull it up, here he is. I did this for fun the other night. Not expecting it to get the response that I did. I got a really big response from people uh, that really liked it. So I thought it was kind of cool uh, to maybe try some other. Uh, this is specifically Lion King, but I thought a panda bear. And not so much Kung Fu Panda, although I know there's someone out there that wants me to draw Kung Fu Panda. I don't like drawing other companies' uh, characters, but we might draw a Kung Fu Panda during the day today. But what if we did a panda bear in this kind of style? I thought that could be kind of fun. Um, like a Kung Fu Panda, but our own version of Kung Fu Panda. More of a, a little grittier Kung Fu Panda. What do you think, Dustin? I like the sound of that. You like the sound of that? The grittier? Or that Or... Um can draw can do a concept of like one of the members of the the family of kung fu panda because you know how oh there's kung different oh i creatures. forgot there's different there's different pandas yeah so it's fun to to make completely different panda but still in that universe that's right because i was thinking i was thinking i was Thinking. Can't wait for the new expressions course. Can you add some anatomy lessons to the course, like which muscles uh, work together to create different facial expressions? That would be cool. I do talk about that. I talk about the the, the, uh, the uh, anatomy of the face. I don't spend a lot of time on it because uh, I want you to understand more about the masses. But I do talk about that quite a bit. Erica's here, says hello, guys. Hey, Erica. Erica, 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 Erica. Michelle Guerrero says, yeah, Panda Bears. Hi, Team Blaze from Northern California. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is this what this bear would sound like. Hello. How, How are you? you? Doing? Mr. Blaze. What? When you do a traditional watercolor painting, which uh, Photoshop brushes and software do you use? <laughs> <laughs> very funny. A very unique software called Water. And the monitor is called a, uh, um, a canvas. Very funny. Very funny. What tablet do you use uh, uh, to draw on, like the one you're currently using? I'm looking for an affordable one just for my hobby, nothing too extravagantly expensive. Well, then you don't want this one. This is the, th the 32. It's just, uh, this is Wacom's biggest tablet right here. Um, yeah, if you're not, if you're not, just, if you're looking just to do it as a hobby, I would run, recommend getting one of the smaller ones or getting a, uh, an Intuos tablet this is a this is a uh, a pen display so you draw right on the screen yeah the smallest most affordable uh pen display that cintiq has to offer is um is a 13 inch yeah which is a it's a 1080p uh uh 
screen that you can draw on, but it's only like 400 bucks. Yes. So here's one idea. Do you have any plans for a landscape environment or background course? Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually do. We have uh, we have an artist coming in uh, specifically for that. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Is it going to be a uh, project style panda bear? Yeah, maybe. 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 Maybe, baby. Trying to trying to decide if this is the pose I want, or if I want to go more full body. What are the main anatomic differences between a panda and a grizzly bear or a polar bear, for example? There's a ton. Almost everything about them is different. Yeah, pandas are big, are fluffier. They're more cuddly. <laughs> YouTube question. Hey, Aaron and Dustin, I'd love to show you my recent digital painting and talk art with you. I don't have anyone in my town who understands it. LOL. Yeah, I know the feeling. Most people don't. Most people don't. But um, back to the original question of the, the differences between the two, the bears. You know, there's there's just as many differences between a grizzly bear and a polar bear as there is, you know, panda bears and everything else so it's and it's just recently uh been declared that panda bears are truly true bears because they're for a long time it was thought that the you know they were more closely related to say raccoons and things like that but they are true bears hmm. true barrymore <laughs> <laughs> you know, there. in fact you do talk about pandas in your uh your bear course actually i'm going to try this instead Okay. I do. Yeah. 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 Ron, how many spots are left in, uh, for the watercolor live day for the watercolor uh, workshop? I have no idea. I just know that we've got some spots open. Uh, Erica says that uh, about the Cinti question, she has the, she's the one, uh, she uses a 13 inch. She was the one that asked the question. She wasn't. No, she wasn't the one that asked the question, but she she was just saying that she uses a that that is the Cintiq that she uses. She uses the thirteen inch. Oh, gotcha. Hi, Aaron. I'm. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Hey, I'm think I'm thinking of purchasing a Cintiq twenty two. Any good? Yes, they're very good. Yeah, I was I used the Cintiq twenty two for a few years. I loved it. It was before you until got they the came 22. out with the twenty four. <laughs> and they, yeah, till they uh, released the twenty four, then from the twenty four to the thirty two. Yeah, thirty two. Thirty two. So here I'm just kind of experimenting to see, just to see, you know, to see. I don't know if this is true or not, but I read somewhere that uh, thanks to panda conservation in China, the number of pandas have increased and now and are now uh, considered vulnerable rather than endangered. Well, that would be nice. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not either, but that would be nice if it was. I know the Chinese take very big pride in their pandas. Joe Garcia asks, when working at Disney, was it was it ever hard to tell the the Bancroft brothers apart at first? The Bancrofts? The Bancroft brothers? At first, when they were younger. But um But after a while you just uh 
you get they now to me they don't look anything alike. It's funny. So there's this. There's this version we can we can do. You can go with this or you can go with that. Make one a little bigger. Oops. Hello. Hello, friend. Hello, partner. So it'd be a portrait like that. Oh, you know what? His eye is way up too high. Look at this. Watch when I reverse this. His eye is going to look like it's all whacked. Oh, yeah, his eye is a little too high. Twitch question. Hey, Aaron, how do you draw animals for the first time? Like, how do you know the anatomy when you look at a picture? Well, because I've studied the anatomy. It just It's like anything else. You study that anatomy and you get to understand it and you get to know it. Will this panda have a uh, Arnold Schwar Schwarzenegger voice? Yeah. An Austrian panda bear? <laughs> Hi, I'm a panda. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> He's Austrian? I like to, to give big warm cuddles. YouTube comment. Hey, Aaron, I recently had a freelance project where I had to animate a cheetah. Fortunately, I remembered I bought your course on four-legged animation and it saved the day for me. I can't thank you enough. Nick says the four-legged bundle is just $7. It is. <laughs> Let me scroll down. And that ends tonight. Yes, so thank you for that note. And yes, the, uh, the, uh, the four-legged bundle is... It's just seven bucks. You know, that's been a really popular one. I love, as you guys know, I love animating animals. And uh, one of the things I've been able to pick up over the years is, you know, animating quadrupeds. And, you know, there's a complexity to it. And I've been able to kind of break it down to my own method of how I approach it. And uh, so I go into that in that in that course. If you're ever looking to animate quadrupeds and, uh, and you're getting frustrated with it, well, check out my course because I, I break it all down for you. Break it all down. Bring it down. Break it all down. Down, take it 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 down, down. Martin's asking, which one is your favorite Bancroft brother? Why not Tony? <laughs> They're both just wonderful. Who asked that? Was that Tony that asked that? No, that was Martin. Martin oh. Berger. So what would I search uh, search to find a tablet that draws directly on the screen? Uh, look for a Cintiq. Um, the $400 one I mentioned before, that's the uh, uh, the Wacom One. It's W-A-C-O-M-O-N-E. Is it necessary to learn intense anatomy for animation? I don't know what you mean by intense, but it does. Yes, you do need to understand anatomy for animation if you want believable humanoid animation or animal animation now you have to understand it of course otherwise it's going to look wrong it'll just look wrong are there still wrong. monthly art giveaways for annual memberships uh we haven't done them in a while because we've been busy doing our courses let me just see what this is going to look like. Dustin, Aaron, are you enjoying Wanda, uh, WandaVision? No, I haven't really been keeping up with it. Uh, I haven't watched uh, this week's episode yet. Uh, I mean, they release them every Friday, don't they? I don't know. I'm not into that stuff. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> All that kid's stuff. I'm not into that kid's stuff. <laughs> really, WandaVision's a kid's, <laughs> kid's show. <clears throat> Hi, Aaron. I was just wondering, when you were animating at Disney, did you pick up any tips for smooth animation? And did you guys animate on ones? 
Yes, we animated on ones a lot. And that's how we got smooth animation, by animating on ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything we did had to be smooth. If you can figure out slow ins, slow outs, and arcs, then you're 90% there for smooth animation. You're a smooth animator. Smooth animator. See what I did there? Smooth animator. Operator. See, I took it from Sade. Uh -huh. Turned it into my own song. Yep, yep. Random question, but would you put... Uh, would you give him a chewing... Uh, have him chewing a bamboo stick like it was... Hey, a now that's an idea. Let's see here. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Chewing a bamboo stick. <laughs> Approaches slowly and whispers, Snow bear? And then runs and hides. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on it. Make sure my bamboo leaves are right. Close enough. Get it right. Feels like bamboo. YouTube comment. I wish there was a course on animal facial expressions. <laughs> well, I'm going to be doing a supplemental. Because right now, the one I, the the facial expressions I just did, um, it's all based on human stuff. But you know, once you understand the anatomy. Everything that I teach in the in the new course coming up, you can apply to animal expressions as well. You really can. I wonder if we should set up a um, like if we do do an animal expressions course. I wonder if we should set up um, like a comment section or something where people can. Oh. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I went, was it, oh, that was your mouth. I thought that was your butt or something. <laughs> uh, but um, but so people can uh, of course like cert like certain types of uh, animals to be shown with expressions like whether it's a, a horse or a bear. Yeah. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear you. Trying to get that eye to feel. There we go. Now it feels a little better. It was feeling a little wonky. Like that eye just didn't want to fit. I think giving him a scar would be too obvious, right? Too obvious about what? Why not give him a scar? I give him a scar. I give him three scars right here. Right in the side. Oh, Max pushed over my <laughs> suitcase. I thought you let one loose that time. What that? That? No, I already, I already snarted earlier. <laughs> Is that your real life? <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a sneeze and a fart together. <laughs> In case everyone was like, what's a snart? <laughs> I just love that you're just telling everybody. That's great. I love it. Hey, it's Friday. Can you tell? Thank God it's Thanks Friday. God, thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. 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 All right. All right. I'm just noodling the rough drawing too much. You got to start start getting with the, with the final, final. Turning a panda into a panda. Why is my phone dude? <laughs> I don't see myself out. Stop calling me. Those are junk calls. Telemarketers. Yeah. Hi, we're Nick calling says, about your This is the last episode of One Division, so you can watch it all now. Oh, I didn't know that. Wait, what? Nick was saying that that was the last episode of One Division. Oh, this week's is. Yeah. Or last week's. But, all right. So the. He said you could watch it all now, so it must be that was the last. That that was the last. I one. think today. Yeah, today's is the last one. I think. Wait. 
Oh, what about uh, Raya? Is it Raya? The 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 Disney movie coming out? Is it right? Raya? Oh, Raya. I think it's Raya. In the Last Dragon. Yeah. That's out today. Oh, did that release today? And that's on Disney Plus. Yep. Yeah. My good friend Paul Briggs co-directed that. Paul and I worked together in Florida. We worked together in California. We worked on several movies together. There. I'm just kind of making up his nose. Man, Martin is really pushing it. <laughs> Martin Burger? Martin Burger. Boy, that's a rarity. <laughs> He's basically put all of our all of our memes into one com one comment. <laughs> and I'm debating whether if I should whether or not if I should say it and if I and if I should sp what accent I should speak it in. Well, how about we skip it? We'll move on to the next thing. Then you oh. can decide later. I know what to do. <laughs> When you first met Walt Disney, were you talking about Snowbear using voice recognition technology <laughs> in a lift? No, oh, that it's doesn't Scotland. get old. That doesn't get old at all. C -c -c combo. <laughs> hey, Aaron, did you ever work with Alex Tapetti? I certainly did work with Alex Tapetti. Alex was the cleanup supervisor on Raja the Tiger. And I designed Raja the Tiger for Aladdin. So Alex and I worked pretty, very close to, closely. Although he worked in California and I worked in Florida. What do you think of vector animation software such as Adobe Anime? Uh, used to I, be fun. I have no thoughts on it whatsoever. I don't use it. I use TV Paint. I can't find a I don't software. Like any, I don't like vector based stuff, personally. I can't find a software free or cheap to animate uh, vector drawings in uh, traditional ways. Yeah, everybody wants free or cheap. I don't understand. Sorry, I just don't get it. I don't understand why you want free or cheap. Everybody wants free or cheap. You know, the world revolves around um, uh, commerce. And the best software out there, you got to pay for it. Kirk YouTube Michaels. question. I have a question for you. I'm currently working on environmental concept art, and I'm just wondering if you have any tips on light and shadow in different value ranges, for example, distant mountains. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing you have to keep in mind is are, are your value ranges when you're talking about atmospheric perspective. That's what that is. That's that, You're talking about atmospheric perspective. You know, depending on how heavy the atmosphere is will determine how much atmospheric perspective you have. So if something's really foggy, it's obviously going to gray out and become, you know, invisible fairly quickly. But if something, you know, if the, if the air or the atmosphere is really clear, then you don't get a whole lot of change from the foreground to the background. But there's usually at least a fair amount of change, you know, in regular or normal conditions. And that's what we get. That's what we call our atmospheric perspective as things get closer to you, you get more and more contrast within the object. The, the darks get darker, the lights get lighter. As things recede because of the atmosphere, because of all the particulate in the air, whether it's water vapor or dust or whatever, you're going to get uh, things as they recede will work their way toward that midtone. The light, the light areas will get darker. The dark areas will get lighter. And so you get less of a range within a value range within whatever it is that you're looking at. So like when you're looking at mountains in the distance, they look kind of gray because all the light areas have gotten darker and all the dark areas have gotten lighter. So 
those are things that you you think about all the time. Sure. Hello, my two favorite Friday folks. Hello. I'm excited to do the expressions course. Can hardly wait. Oh, that's so, awesome. What other plans uh, for courses are you thinking about doing in the future? Oh, man. I got some more animation courses I want to do. I've got a, a whole thing on animation that um, I get, uh, a lot of people I see get really hung up on the mechanics of walking, you know, just movement, walks and runs and things like that. They get really hung up on the mechanics of it. And in so doing, when they, they're, they're thinking so much about, okay, the weight has to be here and the foot has to go here and blah, blah, blah. They get so hung up on that that they miss the personality. And so I want to do a little course on getting personality into your walks, you know, the mechanics and into getting specifically walks. You know, how do you do a walk but have that personality still in it? So that your, your, the, the mechanics become secondary and it's the, the personality of that walk becomes primary. I think that can be a lot of fun. I'm going to have a little bite taken out of his ear. Nice. And also it might be, um, well, not my, it's definitely, I, I definitely think it's going to happen in the next uh, next couple of weeks to a month, uh, in my own course up and running. Yeah. And uh, be a nice introduction to photography for anybody that yes. wants to get started with that. Yeah, Dustin has been working very hard uh, over the last several years and uh, with his photography and he's got a lot of he picked up a lot of knowledge along the way so I think it'd be good to share that uh, hey Aaron about... are you a fan of cats don't dance it seems to have gone under the radar uh, it's okay I love yeah. that movie I, you know I've never seen it so there you go oh, you never saw it? <laughs> I've never seen it Oh, it's a great, it's a great movie. I know the guys that worked on it. I just never saw it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, what about a uh, primates course? Yes. I get that question all the time. <laughs> yes. I'm doing a primates course. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, the animation, I'm going to be doing that primates course. Oh, there's always going to be an animal course in the works. So don't worry about that. There will always be that. And um, we're going to be doing uh, layout, um, background design, uh, children's book creation and design. Um, we're in the works uh, of creating a... Um, Rigging and 3D animation course. That's going to be a big one. Uh, it's going to take a little while for us to get it. But uh, it's going to teach you how to uh, rig your own character and animate it in 3D. So that's a huge one. And I've got, I've got guys from Disney, Blue Sky, major studios that are going to come in and help us with that. So you're going to be taught by some of the top guys in the industry. Which is always our, that's always my goal. You know, one of the reasons I, I started this is I wanted to make sure that there was good quality education out there from people that really know their stuff. And so everyone that I bring in has, you know, some kind of professional, deeply professional uh, uh, experience, whether it's been with Disney or Pixar, DreamWorks. All right, let's just throw some color. Color, 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 color. What do you think of anthropomorphic what? animals and werewolves? Anthropomorphic animals, animals and werewolves. And, and were, werewolves. Uh, I think they're cool. That's, that's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> what was Walt Disney like in kindergarten? He was a little whippersnapper. He was a little brat. How about concept art and deciding on composition courses? 
Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Did you have, don't you have a course on composition? Uh, somewhat. I've got courses that cover it. Ah, uh, gotcha. But not specific. Yeah, my yeah, I'm planning on um, making my having part of my introduction in photography uh, a little bit about composition, or at least my my personal approach. Oh to yeah, composition. you should. You know what makes a good photograph? You got to talk about that. Jeez. Not just the mechanics that you're going to be talking about. You got to. You got to talk about the art of it, baby. Of course. Of Come course. on, Polly. Which way to the audience, Polly? <laughs> oh, geez, so many courses coming. Yay! Yes, there's, there's quite a lot in the works. That's why we, we always One try eight. to make it worth your while to become a member because there's... You know, and as the as the uh, as the um, the library grows, I mean, it just makes that value the the value of the membership even bigger. And you know, as the as the library grows, we're not going to be able to keep the membership as low as it is. So the sooner you get signed, you know, once you're signed on as a member, um, you're grandfathered in at that price forever, and our prices are going to go up. So, um, as far as membership goes, because we're, we're, we, you know, we, we try to add at least 10 courses a year to the library. And I don't think anybody goes through 10 courses in a year, although there might be someone out there that does. I don't know. So we're actually adding more than most people actually go through or can get through. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe in kindergarten, Walt Disney was as quiet as a mouse. A Mickey Mouse. Oh, a Mortimer Mouse. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Pretty good. Those are good ones, Dustin Blaze. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty perfect. I'm so excited for the 3D rigging and animation. Uh, what tools and applications will you be using for this course? It'll uh, be, it'll be Maya based, uh, but there'll be we're we're trying to figure it all out right now. Um, we want to make sure that it's everyone will be able to access it and everyone will be able to use it. So we're we're trying to figure that out as far as uh, what software we're going to be using and most likely Maya based. But there'll be other, we're not sure what the, we're not sure of all the software yet. So we're still working on that. But it's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be beauty. Do you recommend uh, sketching and painting on digital? Uh, or is it better to start with traditional media? Uh, are you talking about just just learning? I guess learning in general. I mean, I, I'm always an advocate for learning traditional because it's, you know, it's where it all started, first of all. And um, if you're working traditional, it translates over very easily to uh, digital. I think it's hard to go digital and then traditional, but it's easier to go traditional to digital. Could you include how to dance, uh, how to dance animation in the locomotion course? Basically, how you did your hippo funk animation. Say that again. Uh, in the locomotion course, would you include um, how how to create uh, dance animations like you did with your hippo funk animation? Oh, uh, you know what? I hadn't thought about that, but. Yeah, I guess we could. How to create a character dancing? Really, that just comes down to working out your your click track. But I could definitely show you that. How long would your expressions course uh, be? Like, how much how much content do you think there's going to be in the expressions course? I think there's going to be about ten hours.
Is that right? It's about ten hours. Maybe uh, a little less. Maybe more. Maybe like, like eight, eight or nine. Eight, eight, yeah. But it'll be pretty concentrated. We're gonna give them red eyes. What if we give them red eyes? Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> he had red eyes. As God is my witness, he had red eyes. What do you think? Red eyes, yes or no? Sorry? What do you think? Red eyes, yes or no? Red eyes? Red eyes. Listen, clean your ears out. Red. Red eyes. Uh, probably yellow. Red skies at night. What's that? I think yellow. Maybe orange. Orange eyes. He had, he had orange eyes. God is my witness. He had orange eyes. Yeah, that's better. Because the, the red mixed in with that dark gray was really hard to see the eyes. Oh, it's probably because of the monitor. Here, it was pretty easy. But I like that. I like that okay. I'll give that one to you. I haven't taken the animation course yet, but I was curious if it covers how to time things uh, to music or speech. Yes. Or is that not included in a different course? That's included. Yes. 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 All right, I'm going to mix these, you know, tie these together. Yeah, merge last. Merge last, I say. All right, let's get some variations of the color and fur in here. We're going to get some variations. Variation. Variation. All right, so I'm just going through right now and just messing around, hitting some variations of color this is still just local color haven't added any shadow shadow a shadow white buffalo great white buffalo great white buffalo great white buffalo Maybe you can add a crown made out of bamboo. A crown? A crown. A bamboo crown. Hmm. I wonder what that would look like. Let me try something. I'm just going to sketch it in very quickly, right in the local color. Right with the local color. Hmm. What would that look like? So they came around. I'm thinking about if it came around this way. Do you plan to draw birds in the future? I'm curious about how to draw eagles. I've got a whole course on how to draw birds of prey. Yeah, that does include eagles. Yeah, I've got a whole course. I've got a, it's a 60-hour course, isn't it? The what? Yeah, the, it's, the, it's a very, <laughs> it's very... 
It's very, very long extensive. course. Yeah, I've got, a whole, I've got a whole course on how to draw birds of prey. I think that was the long, the longest pro produced course. I don't like it. It's not the way I want to do it. I'm just going to leave it open. Yeah, that sounds good. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I will. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a different background than I usually do. We're going to, we're going to do something different here. Oh, how, 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 how. <laughs> Could you tell us what was your favorite panda from the uh, panda village in uh, Kung Fu Panda 3? I didn't see Kung Fu Panda, Kung Fu Panda 3. Yeah, my, my favorite would always be Poe, but uh, if it was somebody specifically from the village, I would say the, the nunchuck uh, chick. <laughs> There's a nunchuck chick. What about instead uh, adding some uh, some form of like tribal necklace uh, with leaves or fangs? Maybe. 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 Put a heap. Right now I'm trying to just laying stuff in right now. I've been studying guys like uh, Yu, Kim, uh, Bill Schwab, and yourself, obviously. Uh, I, f I feel somewhat conflicted with my drawing style, though. How can I bring my own style through without referencing these guys? Well, I think th those are good guys to reference. I actually know I know all of those guys. As a matter of fact, I hired Bill Schwab when we were uh, at Disney working on a certain project because I, I was so impressed by his work and uh he's just an amazing amazing artist and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet i really loved working with bill and so i think there's a lot to learn by referencing their 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 styles and you know it's okay to do that and it's okay to uh learn from that because that's that's what's going to happen is you're going to learn So, I mean, I copy, co uh, copied, I straight up copied old masters to learn how to paint, you know. You learn that way. It's okay to do that. And then you go and you make it your own. Are you still planning on making an uh, Africa's f uh, Big Five drawing course covering yes. those animals? Yeah. That's another course we'll be doing. Absolutely. Absolutely, mate. Giving him a bunch of bamboo in the background. Lost Nick. Nick, 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 Birch, Birch. I always like adding a long pause. Nick, 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 Birch. Are you excited to see Ryan the Last Dragon? Yes. I always love seeing my 
friend's my friend's artwork up on the screen. What if you should add a, a tooth like a bulldog, like a bulldog tooth? Who are you? Are you are you suggesting that? Oh, somebody else is suggesting that. Oh, I do the necklace. Though. I like the necklace. I like the necklace idea. Dustin, have you got any of the next gen consoles? Uh, nope. I I'm just PC and Nintendo Switch. Though I might get a console in the in the future. Uh, when will you move? Uh, will you do the watercolor course in the old studio? Yes. Yeah, I won't be. I won't be in the new house until the end of the month. So we'll still be. We'll still do it from here. YouTube comment. I'm up to Peregrine Falcon on Birds of Prey. Still a long, long way to go. Yeah, is that? Uh, I wonder if that was uh, Erica. I just posted that. I know Eric has been cranking away. Up. There's some rumbling out there. You hear that? I don't hear it. Oh, not now. Not now. No, no, you idiot. As for Lake Mar, I know you answered this question uh, earlier, but uh, is traditional uh, painting skill necessary to learn digital painting? No, but it sure as heck helps. That's what games do you play? Uh, my my top two currently are War Thunder and Cross Out. Next question. <laughs> hey, can you do me a favor? Because yes. I'm dying of thirst. Can you go grab me a, a soda water? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll hold down the fort while you're gone. Uh, soda water or, or Diet Coke? Dude? Diet Coke sounds great. Dude, you got it. There we go. YouTube question. I have a question. Something said by Glenn Keen, and it's a and it's believe in your characters, draw with sincerity. So if you don't mind me asking, could you explain what he meant by that? He means but put yourself in your character. Don't step outside of your character and just draw an empty character. You know when we draw these, uh, uh, when we're drawing our animation characters, you know something like this is a one-off. I'm trying to come up with something cool, but over time it would grow on me. Thank you, Dustin. And, you know, it's something like the Beast. Let's say the Beast, because that was a Glenn Keane character. But, I, but it was also a character that I animated. Oh, I, gave, I put a Coke and a smile on my face. <laughs> See if I can deliver these lines now without burping. But, um... You know, you get to know these characters, you read the script, you understand who they are, you put yourself in them, you try to experience the emotions and the, you know, everything that else that they're getting across. You want to get that, you know, you want to get that as strongly on the screen as possible. And the only way you can do that is to immerse yourself in these characters. And so when he's saying, you know, draw, draw with sincerity, believe in your characters, he's saying, put yourself in them and draw from the heart. You know, when you can feel what they feel, you're drawing from the heart. And that's when your animation becomes real, becomes sincere, becomes something that when you're watching it, you forget that you're watching drawings. And now all of a sudden you're watching a living, breathing, emoting 
character that has emotions that that is not just a drawing on a piece of paper it's something more than that it's something above that and that's what you know drawing with emotion and drawing with sincerity will give you there you go and, that, and he always preached that to me when I worked with him and it's probably one of the best lessons I ever learned from him because I try to do that with everything even even something like this even the you know a one-off like this as I'm drawing it I'm trying to feel who this character is now, obviously, I haven't spent any time with this character. He's new to me, but it's still something I try to, you know, I try to get that emotion in the eyes and in the face and everything else to try to get that to feel real. How do you juggle so much at one time? All the courses, live streams, moving, that sounds like a lot. It is a lot. But I love what I do. And I've got Nick and Dustin. <laughs> What's the software you're currently working on? This is Photoshop. So now, I want him to be mysterious. Let's give him, let's do shadows that... Um, that uh, are shaped like bamboo. Like he's got stripes of shadows coming across him. Let's see here, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna experiment here. And now it's time for a huge airplane shadow. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Lots of shadows. We're going to do this a little different. <laughs> We're going to get bamboo shadows going across that face. What kind of animal spirit is Mr. Aaron? I'm going to say bear. There we go. <laughs> what? He's <laughs> like, Ghostbusters. All right, so let's. These are the leaves coming across, you know. How do you pick your shadow colors, Mr. Aaron? Well, here I wanted it. To, I wanted the shadow colors to be cool. So I went to a cool blue, gray. Hey, Dustin. Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> huh? I answered for you. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, I was watching the last live stream. Uh, do you do you have to re-record scenes a lot for the lessons? I was surprised how long editing took for the Birds of Prey course. Um, the only time we really shoot shoot more than once is in the opening and 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 uh, and endings, and that's usually about it only very rarely have we had to re-record anything i think we had to do one for birds of prey and i think it was an owl course because uh i deleted it by accident 
Yeah. Or no, I don't think it was that you deleted it by accident. I think it was that the power went out halfway through the halfway through the lesson, and we and we lost the file. Oh. Uh, yeah, so we had to do it all over again. Actually. I know that was one. But Tyler on YouTube asks, I'm a graphic designer and take jobs for logo designs, vector art, decals, some paintings, etc. I'd love to transition to a career as a full-time digital painter. Are there any tips? Wow. Well, um, I think you, you just got to start. First of all, you have to have the work, um, the body of work, right? So you got to do that. But um, how's that? does that work? What do you think of this? Is this? Do you think it feels? Does it feel like he's got bamboo tree shadows on him? Do you? I think so. Might what I might do is go in and just hit with the round, soften some of these like they're getting diffused. Yeah, that'll be better. Um, but you need to have the work, and so um, get get a body of work together. And if you want to make a full, if you want to make a a living as a digital painter that means you're talking about illustration and that sort of thing well then you got to you got to uh you got to start picking up jobs and you have to have a place where where um clients can see your work so you have to have something some kind of website social media set up Here, I just want to soften these. There we go. Just make them feel a little bit kind of out of focus. Sounds like a Tom Petty line. Just a little more in focus. Would you ever want to draw a snow leopard? I've drawn lots of snow leopards. I would love to take a photo of a snow leopard. Yeah, right? On the wild. I know, right? I know, right? Not what the, all, the, all the kids say now. All the young, the younger, those younger kids. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, now it feels a little bit more like dappled light coming through, right? Feel like it to you? Yeah, it's feeling a bit better. I feel better. Feel better. I feel better, Pally. Which way do you have these, Pally? Any news on uh, portfolio reviews? Yeah, I mean we've we've uh, we've got a new scholarship coming up. There's one due this month coming up. Uh, we've already given out four, so stay tuned. If you haven't got one yet, doesn't mean that you're out of the running. Here, I'm just trying to get some shadow in someone's eye. YouTube comment, I'm I'm going to celebrate my birthday in a lockdown for a second time. I know, well, we all have, right? <laughs> and, and it's the big 30 this year. I think I'll give myself a gift of a premium membership. You know what? I think you should. I think you should. And happy 30th. I loved my 30th. I loved my 30s. Man, I wish I could be back in my 30s again. That's why my 30th was last year. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Best birthday ever. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Might the shadows be more vertical for bamboo? 
No, it depends on which way the bamboo is leaning and the, the way wind. the light is coming through and all of that. So I have kind of a diagonal pose to them. So I wanted to counter that pose. Well, not counter, but support that pose by making the, the shadows diagonal. So there. So there. <clears throat> oh, Nick was saying they... He says, uh, the person that asked about this, the portfolio reviews, he thinks they were just asking about, are we doing portfolio reviews? And yeah, not, not, not on the... Uh... Not scholarship. I see. Sorry. Um, no, we're still not doing that yet. It's just hard for us to do um, because we have so many uh, people asking about it. There's no way I can get to that many. But... We'll find, we'll figure out something along the way. Hey, I turned 30 on lockdown too. I'm about to be 31. I also got myself a premium membership, so no better time to study when you have a lot of, a lot of time. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. And it's not getting any better. You know, last year at this time we figured, hey... You know, a year, a year will go by or so, and we'll be okay. And here we are a year later, and it's still going strong. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's why when last year we dropped all of our prices, it was hard to maintain because, you know, you got so many, like the, the free stuff we gave away and all that, you know, you get, we have to pay for the bandwidth. We actually, if, when people buy something mm -hmm. and they download it, we have to pay for that download. It's bandwidth that we have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 we dropped the prices plus the bandwidth went up, you know, so it was hard to maintain. It's the reason why we had to bring the prices back up. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we're thinking about doing something this year because it's just not getting any better. It's getting hard, you know, I know it's it's tough for people especially being stuck at home and you know and I feel you trust me I feel you so Nick and I have been talking I think we're gonna we're probably gonna do something all right I kind of like that what do you think I can lighten it up yeah. I can blur it too. Let's see what that looks like. Does that feel better? With the Gaussian blur on it? On the on the foreground? On the panda? On the shadow? I think it does look a little better. Yeah. I also think adding some Gaussian blur in the background too. Oh I'm going to. That's all gonna be pushed back. Yeah, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I'm actually going to do what? What's the round blur things called? Bokeh. 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 What? Book, book, what? Bokeh. Bokeh. Yeah, I'm going to do bokeh in the background. A lot of people think that's bokeh, but it's actually bokeh because it's spelled B O. -K. Rhymes with okay. Rhymes with okay. All right, so let's start drawing on top. I think doing a little green reflected light on him would be good. Don't you think yes? Yes. You think yes? Sorry, I was reading a, reading a question. I saw your photo with Ronnie. Do you still play the guitar, or what is your favorite genre of music? My favorite genre of music is, uh, as far as playing, I love playing blues. I don't really have a favorite genre. I, I don't. You know, there's genres that I I can't listen to, but you know stuff that's. I don't know. It's hard to say what my favorite is because I love, I love so many different types.
Yeah, I forgot I posted. You see that picture of Ronnie and I from yeah, I saw like that. 15 years ago? Well, not 15, 25 years ago. Yeah, it was crazy. You're just a little squirt. That's where we need to get to. Africa. 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 Oh, coming to America coming to America is uh out today as well. Oh. That's on uh, HBO Max, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure it is. He sure it is. Yeah, that one looks like fun. I haven't watched the first one in so long. Is that the one who goes sexual chocolate? The uh the the band that's playing? Was uh, that was that was that coming to America or was that one of his other ones? Like I, I said, it was, it was so long ago I can't remember all of it. He played that character so well. I thought it was coming to America. And I think the first coming to America was one of Samuel Jackson's first roles because he was the robber at the McDonald's. Oh, that's right. I think, and I think that was one of his. If not, it, oh, it's on Amazon actually, Prime. It's, oh, it's on Prime. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Come again. Yeah, Samuel Jackson is young in that in that uh, in that movie. I think the couple or a couple of other. Um, actors and actresses that got their first like small small breaks uh -huh. in that movie I just love seeing that Arsenio Hall is out doing another movie <laughs> I haven't seen Arsenio Hall in years whatever happened to him I have no idea we used he to watch the Arsenio hard. Hall show every night back when you were born yeah, sexual chocolate is from coming to America. <laughs> That's so funny. Sexual chocolate. Sexual He's stamping his foot. <laughs> oh my god, it's awesome. Oh. Panda. I am the panda. I am the panda. I thought Jurassic Park was his debut. Ah. Is that what? Jurassic Park. Oh no, Jurassic Park was not his debut. First movie I remember seeing him in was uh was uh what the heck? Was uh Oh, geez, a Tarantino movie. Um, come on. Pulp Fiction. That's Samuel L. Jackson's first movie was actually Together for Days in 1972. <laughs> See? He appeared in several television films and made, and made his feature film debut in the Black Poitation independent film. Oh, yeah. No, those, are black, they're, those are like the the crime black crime shows that were that were edited so bad that oh back in the 70s that they're, they're called black black exploitation and the tendency to be edited poorly and yeah, what movie made Samuel L. Jackson they, famous they Pulp fun Fiction that's what it says in Pulp about Pulp Fiction oh what was Samuel Jackson but, uh, Dave Chappelle used to did a lot of skits where he's making fun of those 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 shows. Mm -hmm. I 
Yeah, so that was his. So Together for Days was his. Was his first film, quote unquote, film debut, but the movie that got him fa- that got him on the map that was Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that's what I remember. What do you think of doing an animation course on two poop poop? Wow, on two people moving in one scene. Well, I can. De- I don't know if I could make a whole course on that, but we can definitely. I can talk about. Uh, I can do a lecture and talk about how we would do that by having multiple characters in a shot. Most definitely. Most definitely. Man, have you seen all the azaleas and everything in bloom? It is so beautiful out. Springtime in springtime in Florida. Oh, these are really they're pretty bright already. Dog on it. Can't brighten them up much. That's a that's pure white. Doggone it. Doggone it. I'm all out of questions. I'm all out of love, so lost without you. Would the 3D course allow for someone using Blender to follow along? I'm not sure yet. Nick? Nick, tell us the we're thing. Ta- we were just talking about this the other day in the meeting that we had regarding the course. Not sure. As you can say, he's still in the... Uh, have you worked with head. Steven Silver over the years? Yes, I have. The great artist, really good artist. YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, I'm just starting out and your art is amazing and inspires me a ton. I'm struggling with making my drawings look 3D. What are the best exercises to improve on this particular field? Well, you got to look at it, keep in mind several different things. You got to keep in mind value for light and shadow. You got to keep in mind drawing correct perspective because that helps feel, make things feel like they're in 3D. There's a lot of different uh, principles to think about that will help you down that down that path. We've got a course on uh, an introduction an introduction to drawing by Ronnie Williford that I think is really great and might help you in that in that area. Who do you go to to get your prints made? Uh, we print our own. We've got a, a large format printer. And that one's at uh, Nick's, right? Yeah. Rick, Nick does all the printing. Yep. And then I got my own my own print. 
What kind of printer do you guys? Oh, I know you, you said it's a large format, but do you know what brand or model? It's Sam? Epson. Oh, Epson. But I'm not sure uh, what model it is. It's one of it's the 42, 42 inch, you know, across. That big. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. A 42 or 48? I can't remember. Uh, Nick is saying that there's there will be a lot of overlap in principles between 3D and Maya and 3D and Blender. The problem with 3D software in general is that it goes very deep, and if you go, get too technical in the demos, you can get lost in the weeds. Yes, I agree. I just couldn't. I, I, so a Blender is another. It's something different than Maya. I wasn't sure. I don't know. I don't know this stuff. That's why we hire other people to do it. And Nick knows it. But like Nick says, the the principles will still be the same. Hey, Dead Lives here. It says, hey guys, miss you all. Great and fun artwork so far, especially liking the necklace. Hey, Detlef. How are you, my brother? A brother from across the ocean? <laughs> it's probably like 9.30 there, isn't it? 8.30 in the evening? 9.30 in the evening? Where that left is? Uh, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. I'm all out of love and questions. I'm so lost without you. Oh, we got a 44 inch Epson 9800 Pro. Ooh, Ooh yeah. I got myself a Canon Pixman Pro 200. <laughs> I like how you got to throw yours in. You just got to throw yours in, don't you? Yeah, even though it's smaller than yours. <laughs> Yeah, just drawing in little details. YouTube comment, where do you go to get your prints made? Oh, prints. <laughs> the genie from the lamp, of course. <laughs> Hello from Canada. You are so talented, Aaron. Do you <laughs> use overlay and layers mostly? I use overlay and uh, multiply, actually, as well. I'm just throwing in some some fur textures there, eh? Some fur textures. <laughs> That's quite a lot of textures you got there, bud. I gotta draw a little Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu. <laughs> A couple of idiots here. You. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, you, idiot. You, a big fool. Oh, it's 8.30 th in France right now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think Detlef is in the same... Aren't you in the same time zone, Detlef? Yep. It says, uh... Yeah, he says, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. It's 8.30 p.m. Uh, indeed. Perfect time for a live stream. Hey, it's Friday night. Perfect time for a, a little libation. Do you print on uh, watercolor paper, uh, canvas? Is it uh, yes. clay? Giclé. Giclé? Yes. It is giclé, and yes, we can print on all that stuff. I usually... G well, Clay is just a fancy way of saying inkjet. Ah. But uh, it, 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 spray, it doesn't spray in dots. It sprays... I, I think G Clay sprays a little differently. If I'm right, I, 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 I might be wrong. Yeah, I personally use um, 
That looks Wait. terrible. I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin, go ahead. I've been uh, printing with um, uh, Canon Luster paper. That's why I, that's why I started out with, and that's why I'm used to using. Uh, luster. Luster. But, um... You were looking for it, but... You're uh, looking for it because you luster. A, a luster <laughs> But, um... Yeah, the, my first couple of attempts of printing didn't go so smoothly because I was brand new to printing. <laughs> yeah. And, um... I had a Skype dad for help and troubleshooted for, what, half hour or an hour. And... You know, like trying to go through the settings and reprinting and nothing was going right and everything was just dripping. It was just the the ink was not sticking to the paper properly. And of course um, I couldn't see that from the on the Skype. Yeah. And so Dad was like, What what kind of paper are you using? And like I'm using uh, luster paper and he's like, Are you using the right side? What? <laughs> <laughs> There's a right side. <laughs> yes. So I flipped the paper around, and sure enough, it worked. All all this time, I had no idea that there were that there were two sides of a uh, paper. Yeah, what, there's a front I mean, obviously there's two sides, but I didn't know that one side is different from the other. Well, you learn something every day, Pally. Yes, you do. That when that paper. But when it started printing out, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 so good. Greetings from Poland. Uh, what right advice... on. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you. What advice would you have for a student who would uh, like to work at Disney? Love your work. Well, I mean, it depends on what you want to do at Disney. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm assuming you mean in the animation industry. Um, you know, it's Disney is great. Disney's wonderful, but it, Disney's not. You know, it's not the end all. There's a lot of other great studios. You know, I worry about. There's a lot of students out there that say, "Yeah, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to make it at Disney. I got to make it at Disney." Well, Disney only has a few hundred people. That's it. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of people that want to work at Disney. And so, you know, just keep my, my biggest advice is shoot for the stars and, you know, hopefully you'll hit the moon and hopefully you'll hit the stars, you know, if you, you know, if, but it really does require a lot of hard work and, um, hard work, patience. Yeah. Lots and lots of, Patience, like hospital patients. What are you talking about? Uh, patients, like when you're <laughs> when you're working in the cubicles at Disney, don't expect to get get promoted within a span of a week or something. Yeah, there's. I saw a few people like that that quit because they didn't advance the way that they thought they should, and they were a little bit immature, as I'm concerned there. So within the shadows, you know, there's there's value changes within the shadows as well and temperature changes. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to hit here. Hi, don't forget to save. Oh, yeah. Save your work. There. File. Save as. Save on my computer. We're going to save this in the, uh, oh, actually, I can't save it there. I'll just save it on the desktop right now. Panda. Could you do a course on making your own prints? I don't know if we really need to make a I don't think we need on. to do a course on that, but we can. We could definitely do a video on it. I mean, maybe I could add it to, as part of my photography course? No, well, I think it's, I think he's talking more about, um, like art prints and stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, part of your photography course, you could you could talk about prints, but um, I think as an introduction to photography, I think you should keep it more in line with uh, photography. 
<laughs> so I can remember Print, printing, that. printing, making prints is just as vital for photography. Oh yeah. You could definitely have a. a, a uh, I mean, if anything, I a can chapter probably, in there for chat for that. I mean, I mean, if anything, I could easily fit that into in my uh, um, like talking about how to photo edit through Lightroom and all that. Yeah. Because yeah, in the go. end, I'll have, once it's done, I can I can make the print and bing bang boom. Bada bing bing bada boom. Bada bing bing bada boom. Two forty one. All right, so I got to get some extra. I'm just sitting here, just not really doing anything. So what I want to do here is I want to get some extra shadow. In some of these areas. How are you determining where to change the shadow temperature? Uh, I think about what it's reflecting. So if it's reflecting sky. I'll, I'll make it cooler because it'll be blue sky. If it's reflecting some of the bamboo around it, I'll make it warmer because the green is, you know, that is that kind of hot yellow green. Someone by the name of V is asking, hey, Aaron, how do you cook a prime rib? <laughs> <laughs> well, set that sucker to 280, put it in the oven and let it go low and slow. <laughs> Low and slow. Tonight is prime rib night. Mm -hmm. Gonna be delish. Let's see. I'm gonna go. Got it. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I want. We're going live. We're do it live. Scrub, we'll go live. <laughs> do it live. I hate that guy. And I love everybody. I try. I truly do. I truly, truly try to love everybody, but I can't stand that guy. There are people that I love. There are people that I like. There are people that I respect. With a question mark? <laughs> respect? And then, then there are people I just hate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very short list. Because <laughs> you love everybody. Oh, yeah. You're the easiest going guy I know. Well, like I said, I, I love and like a lot, a lot of people. Just about every, as you said, just about everybody. But then they're, then they're like celebrities or whatnot that I'm not a huge fan of, but I do respect. YouTube, okay. I got to, I got to answer this. Sorry, YouTube comment. Hello, Mister Aaron. Thank you. I asked you to draw Kung Fu Panda, and I've been watching regularly. Well, we knew you'd be on today, so that's why we're drawing for you. This isn't exactly the traditional Kung Fu Panda. But it's close. But it's an Aaron Blaze version of Kung Fu Panda. What is the brand of your favorite watercolor brushes? I don't have a favorite brand. I just, I always, I, I literally just grab what works. Literally? <coughs> literally. Quite literally, sir. Well, this is for you, person. <laughs> I love you, Metro Man. And, you... I, and I love you, Random Citizen. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. How do you approach a new project? Do you get nervous when you're starting something new? How do you manage uncertainty of not having all the information you'll need to finish? Well, I don't, I don't, I make sure I have all the need information I need to finish. So... I don't get nervous because I, I know the process of how to go about getting a project done. And there's definitely a process to it. Part of that process is making sure you have all the information to finish. So if you don't, you better be nervous. Huh. 
You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what you mean. All right, let's work on that background a little bit. Just a little bit more. Have you made, uh, not made, have you used uh, Da Vinci's brushes made in Germany? Uh, I think I, I can't remember. I can't remember. All right, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? You know what I want? You know what I want? What I really, really want? I don't know what you want, what you really, really want. I want that. I want to hit. I want to hoot. I want to hit. I want to hit. All right. Uh, we're going to do overlay. No, I'm not doing overlay. I'm going to do. I'm going to do uh, color dodge. I'm going to knock this down a little bit, like 39%. And I'm going to grab like a bright yellow green. And I'm gonna, cause Boca bouquet okay. can be blurry, right? They don't have yeah. to be hard shaped. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's too much. That's a too much. A too much. We do this. I mean, just any any black brown bl blur in general is. Is considered bouquet, but it's it is but um the rounded ones are like bouquet balls. Like though there's those are the ones that are most commonly known as bouquet. I really, really, really want a zigga zigga. <laughs> I wanna hit, I wanna hit, I wanna hit. <laughs> Do you wanna be my lover? Why am I singing? Yeah, this is how this is how bouquet can, can look. Yeah. I gotcha. Oh. Look what I'm doing. Does that look okay? Yeah. Kind of like blurry. Well, this is just blurry, like negative spaces. He is. It works. It works. <laughs> Nick's pulling up. It works. <laughs> Nick's pulling up Spice Girl gifts. <laughs> Why yes? Uh, yeah. Did I ever ask already ask about the um what you look for in a watercolor brush? Uh yes, you did, and I and I really for me, I use flats, filberts, and rounds, and it just those all serve different purposes. For a flat, I want it to hold a lot of water and have a nice hard edge. For rounds, I want them to come to a nice tapered point and hold a lot of water once again. If if drawing wasn't your job, would you still draw when you have time? Uh, I can't imagine it not being my job. That's kind of weird. Uh, it's, it's a good question because I've never really thought about that. Um, yeah, of course. Because, I mean, drawing is such a part of my life. Drawing is my life. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referencing that from a from a kids video on uh Whoa. on YouTube uh, Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle's my line. <laughs> You guys are good at getting songs stuck in my head. You're, <laughs> well, what can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> Why is it when I changed, I changed my brush, it changed the blend mode and everything. So I'm going to, uh, I hold up over there, boss. Good. I'm just uh, now. I'm putting in some regular. Booker, bookers. 
Poco Pocus. Poco Poco Pocus. Seven year anniversary sales extended, babies. Oh. All tutorials and brushes are on sale. Many are just seven dollars. It ends tonight. So if you're interested, check it out on CBS. Go to creatureartteacher.com and check out our news our uh, our latest sale. It's really good. We've been in business now for seven years, and uh, you guys have been so incredible. You know, it's just been it's been amazing. It's been an incredible seven years for us, and so we want to give you a nice little deal. So make a mouth you can't refuse. <laughs> Making the offers you can't refuse. There. How's that look? Does that look great to you? Yeah. Let me blow it up for you. Ooh. Does that look good? Yes. Ooh. Yep. Probably overdone because I, you're missing some of the bamboo shapes in there, but hey, what the heck? We can probably, see? you can probably drop the opacity on them a little bit. Drop your opacity. Drop your face to pass it because they because they they actually do have a bit of they you can kind of see through the bokeh if you look at the picture again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh, yeah. You're right. But these are burned right in. Oh, so you can't change the. No, I can't change. Ah, what the hell? Now, 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 now! <laughs> how many how many years are you doing your business? Seven. <laughs> Would have been a great time to show the slide, Dustin. Oh, yeah, seven years, seven. <laughs> well, that was like a real quick... Well, let Here me do you it go. Again. You hey, to... we got the seven year anniversary sale coming up. Sale extended. All tutorials and brushes are on sale. Many are just seven dollars. There and you it... happy it's right there. And it ends tonight, you guys. So check it out on CBS. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Hey Dustin, if you help, if you drop the opacity of Aaron's face, it would be a helpful anatomy lesson. <laughs> what? I'll drop the opacity on your face. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what's going on. <laughs> drop the opacity on your face. I'll drop your face's opacity. <laughs> I'll drop your opacity. Hey, Aaron. Hey, what's going on? Who do you what's think? What's going on? What's going, what's going on? on? Hey. Uh, who do you think are some top 20th century illustrators that students uh, should look into? Top 20th century illustrators. Illustrators. Line Decker. Line who? Line Decker. Uh, um, Norman Rockwell. One of the top ones as far as I'm concerned. Maxfield Parrish. Uh, um, geez, I'm drawing. Uh, oh, geez. N.C. Wyeth. Definitely N.C. Wyeth. Um, Pyle, Howard Pyle. Mm. All top-notch illustrators from the early 20th century. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's see if I can get some blue in here. I'm going to uh, get some nice... Blue. 
layered into here. Are you gonna be my lover? You gotta be with my friend. <laughs> There we go. See, I'm trying to get some more color rather than just gray. Get some color into your grays. And because this is facing up to the sky, I'm trying to get a little bit of sky color in there, you see. The sky color, you see. There we go. That feels pretty good. Pretty good. Dustin, can you do some Michael Jackson impressions? Hee <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, All right, thank you. Father. See what I just did? What are you are you starting over? I'm gonna start. I don't like it. I'll start over. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to see if I can draw. Poe. Poe. We never drawn Poe. Just gonna do a simple sketch. Yeah. So we're officially done with the. Uh... No, I'm not done with it yet. I just I realized I hadn't. I was gonna try to draw a real Poe. An actual Poe in here. Ah. And. And I hadn't tried yet. I love his design. I do have to say, I just love that design. I don't know if this is him or not. You folks can tell me if you think it looks like Poe. <laughs> wow, Dustin, that was, what should I say, lazy? <laughs> oh, my Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. Comically lazy. That's a do Schwarzenegger. Hey, hey. <laughs> Stick around. When you want to make your grays uh, warm or cold, uh, which paint do you add then? Uh, not well, in a digital medium. Well, it depends on, you got to use a warm or a cool color. So you, you mix, and, and then to get it to gray, depends on how much, uh, um, how much uh, complement you add.
Do you have any tips for an artist who can only draw cartoons? Uh, stop drawing cartoons. Go out and draw from life. That, it'll be difficult, but, you know, at first, but you'll get better and better at it. It's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Let's change his expression just slightly. Let's do this. There. Now he's smiling. Just ever so slightly. This is one of the lessons I teach in my uh, in my uh, character, in my um, uh, expressions course, is how most of the time we get our, our expression cues from each other where we're just making the slightest expressions. It's never, you know, it's very rare that someone's making extreme expressions that you get your cues from. It's usually very, very slight expressions. Hey Aaron, do you work much with uh, acrylics? Why or why not? Uh, I don't work much with them, only because I'm, I'm working with other, other mediums uh, a lot of times, but I, I love acrylics, and yeah, I've done, I've done uh, acrylic paintings. I, I tend to like oil a little bit more, uh, but I love acrylic. I love the, how much acrylics are forgiving. Greetings from Brazil. Have you ever created a Brazilian character? I can't say that I have. I'm watching a great show uh, that's that's shot in Brazil right now on Netflix called The Invisible City. Hmm. Well, fascinating. What's that? I said fascinating. Fascinating. This is my Poe. I don't know if I'm doing them very, very good. Eh, not bad. His head's too round, I think. There, my attempt at Poe. Well, there you go. There's Poe. <laughs> done and done. Twitch comment, folks, I bought the watercolor course in January. I really recommend it. <laughs> Actually, it's been a year that, since we did our watercolor course in, Sar or almost a year, in Sarasota. Mm. All right, there's those. Let's turn these back on. There we go. He's back. Hello from Egypt. Uh, has Hello. Mr. Has Mr. Aaron ever drawn something from ancient Egypt creatures? Um, I can't say... I have done uh, some character design. Was, um, Blue Sky was doing uh, an Egyptian film, and uh, I was doing some designs for them. It was called Anubis. 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 There we go. There we go. If you take suggestions for a future stream, can you draw one of the characters from the Fox and the Hound or maybe Balto? No. No. Next? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I still think you should do a realistic Roger Rabbit at some point since that's another major character you animated. That was a Nick suggestion. I, I agree, Nickster. The Nick's... The Nixter. Nix, Nix, Nixter. All right. Well, I think we're pretty close. What do you think? 
I think so. I think we're just about there. I think we're about there, folks. I think I think we is uh I think we is about there, there uh, fellers. There, our gritty panda bear. Pandas. I love them panda bears. Well, actually, I want to push some of the color. Hold on. It's not a one more thing. It's just it, stop. Oh, it is a one more thing. Guaranteed. <laughs> Man, you smell that? Mm -hmm. Man, that smells good. Uncle Travis is here. Hey, Uncle Travis. This drawing from life helps your brain to see uh, things more in three dimensions. Seeing things natural in perspective is a good thing. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I was drawing a blank there. You okay? Let's push that saturation on the bear. You want me to repeat what your brother said? No, I heard it. He's right. Oh, I forgot the necklace altogether, completely. Oh, what the hell? There's the one more thing. It's not one more thing yet. Yes, it is. Stop with it. Stop with it right now. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it now. It isn't one more thing. It isn't. Or it's not. Or what did you say? <laughs> the tumor thing. It's not it's a not tumor. A tumor. It's, not. it's not the one more thing. <laughs> What do you think about Roger Rabbit's sequel that is in the works? No, it's not in the works. Was that a rumor going around? Yeah, that's never going to get made. Oh, they tried to do it a few years ago. We were going to work on it, but Amblin and Disney couldn't couldn't come to an agreement. Roger Rabbit is a, a not completely Disney's. That was like a half and half. Mm hmm It can cause a lot of troubles with that, with an agreement like that. Well, you're right. Well. You're right, Pally. Right about that, Pally. Yeah, I just need the necklace like that. <laughs> the one more thing drinking game. It's time. <laughs> oh, Here, get your drinks ready. I get your drink on. Get your drink, drink on. on. Get your drink on. What's the story behind the Palais meme? Oh, it's just a... It's a... Um, it's a Dean Martin thing. Dean Martin impersonation. Hey, Palais. Which way to the audience, Palais? It's just Dust and I goofing on each other. Yeah, there's a particular video uh, that's on YouTube of... Um, on the YouTube? On the, on the tubes of you. Uh, <laughs> or it's a... Sammy Davis Jr. Um, doing a live performance for one of um, Frank Sinatra's uh, events. And uh, Sammy does all these different impersonations of, uh, for a song. And uh, like he impersonates Fred Astaire. He impersonates Nacky Cole, Louis Armstrong. Even some of the guys in, uh, the, guys in the Rat Pack, Frank and uh, Dean. But when he comes up to Dean Martin... <laughs> He not only impersonates the voice, like he 
he actually goes into like the personalities of each of the people that he's impersonating. But Dean's is the best. Like he grabs he grabs a drink, leans up against the the piano, looking away from the crowd, and he looks at the pianist and goes, Psst. The pianist leans in. Which way to the audience, Pally? <laughs> <laughs> Stumbles over the mic and does the song and Oh, he did an amazing job. Yeah. So I'm just adding some fur, some fur textures here. You want to make them feel furry. In fact, here in the Facebook group, I'm gonna share a link of the of the video. In fact, oh, yeah? in the link will be the exact timing of when he does the impersonation. Dustin was born in the wrong era. <laughs> So there's just a few spots left for my next live online workshop. So you're, you're going to be able to join me for six hours on August 20th as I demonstrate how to paint animal portraits in watercolor. So uh, that's March 20th. Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live for more information on that. You didn't happen to get that slide up when I was talking about that, did you? Say what? So you didn't hear me at all, did you? Nope. I was talking about the, uh, that's your job. You got one job. You got one job, Dustin. You got one job. Get that slide up when I'm talking about it. Which slide were you talking about? Oh, my God. Are you serious? Which slide were you talking about? I was talking about the live, the live course. March 20th. There you go. Workshop ad right there. Bam. Go to creatureartteacher.com slash live. You're grounded, by the way. <laughs> Darn. You're fired. Yeah, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> All right. We're getting nice fur texture here. So what I'm what I'm doing is I've got this little spotty brush that I created and I put it uh, on my uh, smear tool, smudge tool, and you can create little fur textures with it. Hey Aaron, when you were starting at Disney or when you started directing, were you overwhelmed with all the new things you had to learn? How did you handle them? I, I just, I handle it like I handle everything. It's just one thing at a time. I don't get overwhelmed. I just pick one thing, focus on that, and then I move on. That's pretty much how I handle everything. Which I says, one more thing, you're done. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> up there. Better one more thing drinking game than one more thing hot chip, hot chip challenge. Ooh. Oh. 
Yeah, that was an interesting day. That's horrible. Here, our killer can't panda. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. It came out quite nice. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to sign it now. All set and done. One more thing with the signature. You saved the work. Save now. There's the one more thing. There we go. Let me blow it up for you. Boom, boom. There. There's our panda. Looking through the shadows in the bamboo grove. So look, you can you can really get away with a lot. You can really improve the lighting in your in your uh, images if you can get some nice, cool colors within those shadows, which is what I was doing here, reflecting some of that sky color back. And also, you know, you can get those shadows to be more convincing, like they're dappled light through the tree branches, or in this case, the bamboo branches, by letting some of those the light coming through get blurry like I did here these little circles these blurry circles of light that I created in this area you can see how loose it is when you come back on it it feels like it's light coming through and that shadow feels like it's a real shadow so keep that in mind when you're drawing and painting and that goes for both digital and traditional it's the same thinking you're just applying it two different ways so there you go will you sell prints of this asking for a friend uh, we could. We definitely could. Um, we might. So, Nick, maybe we can do prints of this. Nick, figure it out. <laughs> I, mean, we, I had to do one more thing there. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh there God. it is. One more, oh, thing. one more thing. There we go. There it is. Man. Save. All right. Save. So, there's our panda. Our gritty gritty panda so i hope you guys had a great time today thanks for sticking around we had a great time ourselves uh remember i've got uh in pre-orders right now i've got my course on drawing clear expressions and that is up for pre-order right now and uh uh going over to creature art teacher for that and the other thing to, that ends today is our uh seven year anniversary it's seven years seven days seven dollars and uh, so this is our seventh day. And so go on over to creatureartteacher.com and check that out because there's a lot of things that have been dropped down to seven bucks and uh, you can benefit from that. Also, the book is in pre-order, The Art of Aaron Blaze book. And uh, so if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books, you can find a chance to pre-order that as well. And then once again, last but not least, don't forget my course on the 20th my live web course on painting animal portraits in watercolor. That's going to be all day on March 20th, which is a Saturday. Uh, for me, it's going to be 11 from 11 to 6, I believe, or 530. Um, so uh, I'm in the Eastern time zone in the United States. So uh, figure it out from there. <laughs> <laughs> figure, it <out. laughs> figure it out from there. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I hope you guys had a great time. I had fun drawing my version of a panda the realistic, if this is realistic Kung Fu Panda. Here we go. That's that's what it is. Yeah. So anyway, um, here, go to the screen one more time. There yeah. it is. Our Kung Fu Panda. Digitally drawn. Digitally, digitally drawn. Digitally. 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 So anyway, I hope you guys had a great time. Go out.
put some beauty back into the world. Put some, put your shopping cart away, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if you guys are interested in any wildlife photography for you uh, newcomers here, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> you check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze. And in fact, today I uh, recently posted a beautiful photo of a bald eagle soaring the skies. So everybody go over there and check that out. And uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great weekend, guys. See you next Friday. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. Bop. Yeah. Bop. Cowboy Bebop.